Cardiovascular disease is the leading cause of death in the world in both men and women. And therefore, this video is quite possibly the most important educational video I will ever film. My name is Bobby Qureshi. I'm a naturopath and osteopath, and I'm also the director of education for the College of Naturopathic Medicine. And in this video, I will be giving you simple steps to improve your cardiovascular health. Given that cardiovascular disease is responsible for 32% of all deaths globally, this topic is something for us to take very seriously. So what is cardiovascular disease? Cardiovascular disease describes a group of conditions affecting the heart and blood vessels, which includes common problems such as heart attacks and strokes. The crucial thing for you to know is that around 80% of all cardiovascular disease is actually preventable. So what are the main causes of cardiovascular disease? Well, unhealthy diets, a lack of physical activity, obesity, smoking cigarettes, and excess alcohol are all damaging to the delicate lining that is continuous throughout your heart and all 60,000 miles of blood vessels in your body. And when this delicate lining is damaged over many years, the risk of plaque formation in your arteries increases considerably. And this is a real problem because this will obstruct blood flow and ultimately could lead to a heart attack or stroke. So there is no better time than now to take action and start following my simple steps to improving your cardiovascular health. Step one, cut down the sugar. Despite what we've been told for many decades, it is sugar, not fat, that is the biggest problem when it comes to cardiovascular disease. I will talk more shortly about the link between fat and heart disease, but for now, let me tell you why reducing your sugar intake is so crucial when trying to improve the health of your heart and blood vessels. Eating high sugar foods results in a barrage of sugar entering your blood. For your body to utilize this sugar, it must first get into your cells via sugar-specific doorways. These doors are locked, but can be unlocked by the hormone insulin, and insulin allows sugar's entry. Over time, if these doors are consistently bombarded with more and more sugar, the lock in the door can change so that insulin's normal effects of opening the door stops working effectively. This is what we call insulin resistance. And this is regarded by many heart specialists as the most important risk factor for heart disease. When your body effectively starts becoming numb to the effects of insulin, we end up with more sugar being left in the blood and this sugar can start sticking to the inner lining of your arterial walls. In addition, insulin resistance increases fat deposition around your belly and promotes inflammation. And critically, cardiovascular disease is an inflammatory process. Think what happens when you twist your ankle. You get swelling, heat, and redness. This is inflammation, and you certainly don't want this happening in your blood vessels. The problem faced in a Western diet is that sugar is everywhere. Just look at the ingredients list of many items in your supermarkets. Estimates in the UK and US suggests that many people are eating somewhere between 20 and 35 teaspoons of sugar in their diet every single day. By reducing your refined carbohydrate intake, for example, sweets, chocolate, and white rice, and instead focusing on more fiber-rich, complex carbohydrates like vegetables, fruits, oats, and brown rice, you can prevent or even reverse insulin resistance and also improve the quality of fats in your blood. Step two, get your fats right. You may be asking the question, isn't eating fat meant to be bad for cardiovascular health? Well, to answer that question, we need to go back to where fats were first credited with causing cardiovascular disease. In the 1950s, an American researcher called Ansel Keys published a large study concluding that eating a high saturated fat diet would increase cholesterol levels and consequently lead to heart disease. His experiments significantly changed society's perception on fats. On the back of these findings, the American Heart Association recommended a diet low in fat 
and high in carbohydrates. Ansel Keys' research involved the collection of data from 22 countries. Yet in his published research, he only presented findings from seven countries. And when looking at the full set of data from all 22 countries, plus the additional data of sugar intake in each population, it became apparent that high sugar diets correlated with higher rates of heart disease. Even today, the low fat movement is dominant in society. In the food industry, there are huge numbers of foods labeled as low fat. But does low fat really mean healthy? Definitely not, because low fat often means high sugar. I always tell my own patients to avoid food marketed as low fat because the likelihood is that it's going to have the opposite effect on your health than you think. So where does cholesterol come into this? Cholesterol is the main type of fat blamed for heart disease. But we shouldn't forget that cholesterol is a vital molecule for the body and we cannot survive without it. So, whilst cholesterol is involved in cardiovascular disease, it is certainly not black and white. For example, research has shown us that if you have high cholesterol levels, but low levels of inflammation in the body, your risk of cardiovascular disease is actually low. Whereas if you have high levels of cholesterol and high levels of inflammation, your risk of cardiovascular disease is much higher. So, what should you do when it comes to eating fats? Well, start by removing any fats in your diet that are damaged. Cut out trans fats, which are found in products such as margarine and many deep fried foods. Also avoid cooking with vegetable oils. And I highly recommend checking the ingredients list of foods in your cupboards. Look out for vegetable oils such as sunflower oil and rapeseed oil, which are so commonly used in the food industry, yet are so easily damaged when heated. In your home, try and limit the use of oils in your cooking, and when needed, opt for more stable oils such as coconut oil. Focus your diet around heart healthy fats, and here are some of my personal favorites. Oily fish, such as wild salmon, mackerel, and sardines are packed with omega-3 fatty acids, which have powerful anti-inflammatory actions. And remember that inflammation is the driving force of cardiovascular disease. These omega-3 fatty acids can also help to lower your blood pressure and reduce cell damage. Oily fish has been extensively studied for supporting heart health and shown to be extremely beneficial. Extra virgin olive oil is another one of my favorites. It is a key feature in a Mediterranean diet, and it is no surprise that a Mediterranean diet has been shown as highly beneficial for heart health. Extra virgin olive oil is rich in anti-inflammatory plant compounds called polyphenols. And I highly recommend to only purchase extra virgin olive oil that is in a black glass bottle which will help to prevent the oil from damage through exposure to sunlight or plastic. Consider drizzling olive oil over foods such as salads, or you can use this in your cooking, but only at low temperatures. Avocado is another one of my favorite healthy fats. It is especially rich in vitamin E, which is a very powerful antioxidant that can help to protect your blood vessels from damage. Studies have shown that eating just one avocado a week can reduce your heart disease risk. Step three, eat the rainbow. The father of modern medicine himself, Hippocrates, was right when he said, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. We want to be aiming for a rainbow of color in our diets because the more colors from whole vegetables and fruits means more antioxidants. And antioxidants are crucial in that they prevent oxidative damage, a key process involved in arterial plaque formation. The colors I'm referring to are pigments known as phytonutrients, phyto being from the Greek word for plant. For example, the phytonutrients found in foods such as blueberries, red onions, tomatoes, and red apples provide heart protective effects. And also, do not forget that the quality of these plant foods is really crucial. Prioritize organic produce or consider growing your own food. Step four, 
consume heart superfoods. Some foods have particularly powerful heart supportive properties with the following being my go-tos. Berries such as blueberries, cranberries and bilberries are rich in antioxidants like anthocyanins. These substances protect you against oxidative damage and inflammation. They protect that delicate lining in your arteries, reduce arterial stiffness and even help with insulin resistance. Aim for a small handful of these a day. The next heart superfood is garlic, which has been well recognized as a heart protective food for many, many years. Garlic contains a compound called allicin, which is formed when garlic is cut or crushed. Allicin is responsible for that distinctive odor of garlic and is also credited with many of the beneficial properties for cardiovascular health. This includes reducing inflammation, reducing blood pressure, and supporting healthy blood fat levels. Studies have even shown that garlic may help to slow the process of arterial stiffening and aid plaque removal in arteries. In terms of using garlic, note that its beneficial compounds can be easily damaged if overheated, so heat low and slow. Also, crush your garlic and leave it for about 10 minutes before cooking to maximize the amount of allicin produced. And the final heart superfood is green tea. This is rich in antioxidants that protect the lining of the arteries and also helps to lower blood pressure. Green tea also provides benefits in cases of insulin resistance. And to obtain the benefits, simply consume one to two cups a day. Step five, stop smoking and reduce alcohol. Smoking cigarettes significantly increases oxidative damage and even lowers the body's own levels of antioxidants. In addition, it promotes inflammation and increases blood pressure. Even secondhand smoking is a problem. Just 30 minutes of secondhand smoking increases platelet reactivity, which basically means that it makes your blood more clottable. So avoid cigarettes at all costs. Also cut down on your alcohol intake, focusing especially on reducing sugary alcoholic beverages. These can worsen insulin resistance and also promote inflammation in the body. Step six, get moving. Movement and good nutrition go hand in hand. It's true that you can't outrun a bad diet, so make sure that you're doing both. In terms of exercise, you don't necessarily need a gym membership or a personal trainer. You simply need to commit to engaging in regular movement. This could be something as simple as a walk outdoors in fresh air every day, doing some cycling, some Pilates, weight training, or even some swimming. My best advice is to do something that you enjoy and try and work it into your life as more of a habit. For example, maybe you could walk the dog at a faster pace. You could cycle to work. You could do some Pilates perhaps whilst listening to your favorite podcast. So remember, stop fearing fat and start fearing sugar. Eat a rainbow of plant foods. Incorporate heart superfoods into your diet every day. Stop smoking and reduce alcohol and get moving. By following these simple steps, you can drastically improve your cardiovascular health. From my own experience as working as a naturopath, I'm always promoting to my patients the importance of prevention. Just because you have a family history of heart disease, it doesn't mean you are necessarily destined for the same. Take back control of your health and let's work towards healthier and happier hearts. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and be updated on new weekly videos. If you have any suggestions of topics you would like us to discuss or cover, please leave us a comment and I'll see you in the next episode.